Welcome to Everyday Nursing Knowledge Lectures and today we will learn about Central Venous Pressure or CVP. Central Venous Pressure is the pressure within the vena cava near the right atrium. So the right atrium receives deoxygenated blood through the vena cava. So when the CVP measures the pressure in the vena cava, it gives a direct measurement of pressure in the right atrium. So CVP is equal to right atrial pressure. It is also the right sided heart preload. What is preload? Remember the term preload is the volume. The blood in the right atrium flows through the right ventricle when the tricuspid valve opens and it happens at the ventricular diastole. So the preload is the volume of blood found in the right ventricle at the diastole. So remember CVP gives measurement of right atrial pressure as well as right sided heart preload. Normal CVP is 2 to 6 mmHg in a spontaneously breathing patient. How do you measure CVP? You can measure CVP by connecting a pressure transducer using a fluid filled tubing to the central venous axis. And you have to connect to the distal port of the CVC because the distal port remains close to the right atria. And this transducer is placed and zeroed at the level of right atria. That's called phlebostatic axis and it is the fourth in the costal space mid axillary line. Now let's see the CVP waveform. This is the normal waveform. It has three peaks A, C and V and two descent X and Y. When the right atrium contracts, the pressure in the right atrium increases and that causes a A waveform or A peak. And when you compare to EKG, it follows the P wave because P wave represent atrial contraction. So A peak is because of the right atrium contraction. And as the right atrium contracts, blood in the right atrium flows to the right ventricle and there is a decline in pressure. This is interrupted by a C wave. And the C wave or C peak is because as the right ventricle receives blood, it starts Systole, it starts to contract. As a result, the tricuspid valve moves up towards the right atrium, causes a slight increase in the pressure that causes the C wave. It follows the QRS complex because QRS represents the ventricular contraction. And as the ventricle contracts, remember the right atrium relaxes and the pressure declines that causes the X descent. Now the right atrium is relaxing. When it relaxes, it receives blood from the vena cava. As a result, the pressure increases causing a V peak and it follows the T wave in EKG. And when the right atrium is full of blood, the valve, the tricuspid valve opens and the blood in the right atrium flows to right ventricle. As a result, there is a decline in the pressure that causes the wide descent. Now let's see the condition that can increase or decrease CVP. What are the conditions that can cause increase CVP? Definitely remember CVP is the preload of the volume. So when the patient is fluid overload or elevated intravascular volume, it can cause increased CVP. Any condition that affect the pumping ability of the heart can lead to increased CVP. Example, depressed right-sided cardiac function. If there's a right ventricular infarct, right ventricular failure, the pumping ability of the heart is affected. There is always a backup pressure. Pressure increases. As a result, that leads to increased central venous pressure. Cardiac tamponade. Cardiac tamponade is the fluid filled up in the pericardium that is sac around the heart. It affects the pumping ability of the heart. As a result, the CVP increases. Constructive pericarditis. Again, the pericardium becomes stiff. It affects the pumping ability of the heart. As a result, the central venous pressure increases. Pulmonary hypertension. Increased pressure in the pulmonary circulation. There is always an increased backup pressure. And as a result, the CVP increases. Same as in chronic left ventricular failure. Next is high PEEP. In mechanically ventilated patient, if the patient is in high PEEP, high PEEP can cause increased intrathoracic pressure and high CVP. What are the conditions that can cause decreased CVP? That is decreased intravascular volume or when the patient is fluid deficit, it can cause decreased CVP. Venodilation. In venodilation, there is peripheral pooling of the blood. As a result, venous return to the heart decreases. And when the venous return or the volume back to the heart decreases, CVP decreases. So today we learned about central venous pressure and thanks for watching my video.